Hello, everybody. My name is Jorge Castillo, Dodgers reporter with the Los Angeles Times. I'm here with Kevin A.C. of the San Diego Union Tribune, who, again, covers the Padres on an everyday basis. The hot, I mean, we said it last time, the hot, hot Padres, they stayed hot. They're even better now. Um, and these two teams, the Dodgers and the Padres, will be beginning, a, they're going to begin a three-game set in San Diego at Petco Park tonight, uh, Monday night. Um, they got three games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the Dodgers head into the series just two and a half games up on the Padres, who are looking to end their seven-year stranglehold on the National League West. And Kevin, what's it what's it looking like down there in San Diego after all these moves they made, and like their their 85 moves on August 31st? Like a completely new team. Uh, they keep moving guys up and down. I think the current count is there are six guys on the active roster right now that were not there before the flurry of moves at the trade deadline. I mean, it is a completely new team, obviously, figuratively, uh, and it's uh, at least about uh, a quarter new, uh, literally. Yeah, I mean, Eric Hosmer got hurt, but other than that, it seems like everything's kind of full steam ahead, huh? Well, so you have Eric Hosmer got hurt, and his replacement – Mitch Moreland, who they traded for, not doing as well as Eric Hosmer. Eric Hosmer was having the kind of season that the Padres actually paid for the last two. Tommy Pham got hurt. Now, here's the deal. Tommy Pham was hitting 205. Tommy Pham broke his handmate bone on the 16th of August. It's since the 17th of August that the Padres are 20 and 5. Now, that's not because Tommy Pham is out. Uh, they expected Tommy Pham to, uh, you know, to return to being the guy that they traded for. And he could come back in this series. Just like I understand, uh, is just, Justin Turner going to come back in this series? Um, there's a possibility. I, okay. I, think it's, I think it's pretty remote. I think the one return you'll see, it's not really a return, but Dustin May, who got injured Thursday against the, the Diamondbacks, took that comeback off his foot, left the game after one inning. Um, you know, x-ray, CT scan, showed no fractures. He threw a light bullpen session Sunday at Dodger Stadium. It looks like he's in line to start Wednesday against the Padres, and he's had some you know, a couple of nice uh, outings against the Padres, a couple of nice pitches against Manny yeah. Machado, if you recall, that went viral. So um, he's, he's probably going to pitch Wednesday. You got Tony Gonsolin going Tuesday. Um, but you have other questions going into the series for the Dodgers. You know, Kenley Jansen does not look good um, over the last week or two. Um, he pitched Sunday night against the Astros and had a 1-2-3 inning, but Saturday night gave up five runs, which started with five runs, didn't get an out. Um, the night that his outing before that in Arizona, he didn't look very good either. So he got questions there at the back end of the bullpen. Um, you know, Cody Bellinger, Max Muncy, Jock Peterson is struggling again. Um, Cody Bellinger is hitting six now in the lineup. Max Muncy is hitting under 200. So is Jock Peterson. Um, you got some questions there. And then in starting rotation, we, must, we mentioned just Dustin May. But you know what? Walker Buehler is not in that rotation right now. He's on the injured list. He has that, bl that blister issue. He's gone on the injured list twice this season for it. Um, he has not pitched consistently well. He's not pitched consistently since the middle of August. Um, the Dodgers want to get him back into the fold before the end of the regular season to make one or two outings before the playoffs. But still, you know, the guys in Pittsburgh not much. And this guy's supposed to be like their, you know, he's not their ace right now. Kelly Kershaw's been their best pitcher this season. But Walker Buehler's their, their future ace, the guy that they're going to lean on. He's going to be the number two starter in the, in the playoffs. And there's some question marks there. So while the Padres seem to be figuring it all out, even with some with a couple of players out, the Dodgers have been losing a bit more. And it, a lot but you know compared to how they were rolling when the season started and through you know the, the end of August they're losing a bit more and they're doing it without players like you know Justin Turner and Walker Buehler there, there are a lot of questions around and uh, you know Justin Turner I, I he might be he might be activated this week I, I, I doubt it he'd probably be more more of a chance to be activated in Denver this weekend um, so there's some questions up and down uh, whereas the Padres don't really have many. <laughs> yeah, I wondered early in, uh, before the season with the 60-game season, gosh, how much is the Dodgers' depth really going to help? And obviously, it has helped them quite a bit when you suffer these injuries. I mean, when I go over the, the stats, and for me, it was interesting because the Padres have never measured up. When you go across the line, hey, let's compare catchers, let's compare first baseman, let's that's a joke. Well, this year they do. The Padres, you would even say, are superior. But the, you also notice how hurt the Dodgers have been and how that ability to mix and match has been, has been good for them. You know what the Dodgers uh, should do is follow the Padres' blueprint is you just go out and trade for 40 new players, and that's how you, you know, make sure you guard against these things. So. Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, the, the big trade to me was getting Clevenger, where, whereas the Dodgers traded one of their starting pitchers. <laughs> And, you know, they didn't get the Lance Lynn type that a lot of people thought they would, you know, they would try to get at least. And, you know, they did try, but the price was too, it was too high for them, the Rangers' price. So now instead of, you know, having some, some insurance there at the top end of the rotation, 
You don't have the depth that Ross Strickland provided. Granted, it was back end of the rotation depth. He wasn't going to start a playoff game for them, but he still provided some insurance. And now, as I mentioned earlier, you're dealing with the Walker Bueller injury. You're dealing with Dustin May kind of being iffy. Um, who are you going to rely on for that game two, game three? And whereas the Padres, you know, they got Paddock and they got Clevenger. They got some, you know, they got some guys in that rotation. They got a strong top end of the rotation. You got uh, Denelson Lamette going tonight. And you're either going to look at uh, Mike Clevenger, and I'm almost certain. So you got Mike Clevenger to be your game one starter in the playoffs. That's your guy. But Denelson Lamette has had bouts of dominance, including against the Dodgers one time, all season. So you got him. Zach Davies probably going uh, tomorrow, and then we'll see if Chris Paddock is healthy or not. Sprained his ankle, though I expect to see him throwing today, so we'll see about that. And you got Garrett Richards. The, the Padres are have settled, I think, on Mike Clevenger, Denelson Lamette, and Zach Davies at uh, the top of their rotation for the, the playoffs. Yeah, and that's a strong top, and you need that strong top for a three-game series, you know, wherever they play it, whoever they play against. It seems like a mess right now with the playoff format, and and who exactly they'll play with all the seating, um, you know, kind of changing every day. Um, but, you know, the two guys we talked about last time, you know, Fran Fernando Tatis Jr., Mookie Betts. Betts hit his 15th home run at Ty Tatis uh, last night. Um, they're still steamrolling ahead. Um, what do you think they think stand in the MVP race? Do you think Tatis is the favorite? I – I don't. I think you got to, you, you know, Betts is moving up. Freddie Freeman is moving up. Yeah. Fernando Tatis has had a rough couple weeks. Now, yeah. it's the roughest couple weeks of his very short career, 131 games now. The, the reality is I don't think his next 12 games will be like his last 12 games. Um, and, gosh, when I say struggle, he hit like 260, had like a 813 OPS. It's the worst 12-game stretch of his career. But that's not MVP numbers. And like you said, Mookie Betts just caught him. He, what, at one time was a couple home runs behind him. There was a point where Fernando Tatis, every single night, a walk, a home run, a double, a, you know, hit with a runners in scoring position. So it is relative. But these last two weeks have not been MVP, while other players have been having MVP uh, seasons as well. So this is no longer like a, a unanimous thing. And I'm not sure that Fernando Tatis is, is the MVP candidate. If it keeps going like this, he won't be the top MVP getter from uh, the Padres. And that's interesting because, you know, in, down here in LA, we mentioned, you know, Mookie Betts, but Corey Seager is having a heck of a year as well offensively. You know, defensively, base runner, he's not, he's not the greatest defender, but offensively, he's been probably, besides Betts, their steadiest hitter. He's hitting up well over 300. Um, you know, he's hitting home runs. He's doing really well offensively. Whereas, you know, the last year's MVP, Cody Bellinger, is struggling again. He's he's looking lost yeah. at the plate. He's slumping. You know, he's barely hitting over 200. Um, we mentioned that earlier. And it's it's just crazy how, you know, this is a 60-game season. And the sample size is not very big. You know, if you're struggling for three weeks at a time here, you're, you're, you're having a rough year. And every time you look up the scoreboard, it says 205 or 212, and you're upset and you're frustrated and you, and you press. And I think that's what's happening with Cody Bellinger and Max Muncy and Jock Peterson. You know, there's not a lot of time to, to figure it out and bounce back. So we're seeing some struggles from guys who usually have big numbers for the Dodgers. That's okay. They just hit five. Someone else hits five home runs that night, and, and it's okay. That's how you see the Dodgers down here. What do you, what do you think, Jorge? Uh, two and a half games. I mean, this is, still, this is still on the Padres to continue their torrid pace to have a chance to stop the Dodgers. Yeah, I think so. But, you know, this is also the closest – I mean, I think this is the best team the Dodgers have had to deal with in the division in a, you know, a long time. I mean, granted, a couple of years ago, the Rockies took them to a 160, 163, uh, game 163 at Dodger Stadium. But I just don't think that Rockies team was as good as this Padres team. This Padres team is very good. I mean, just watching it from afar, they seem to have everything. Um, and, and this is a big series. And, you know, the Dodgers have, not, have been playing games, and they've been acting, and they've been saying it. You know, the game is not really – this game was – this season was supposed to matter a lot more. Every game was supposed to matter a ton, 60 games. But the Dodgers have so – they were so comfortable in front. They're going to make the playoffs. The seeding between one and four, does it really matter? Right. All that stuff. But this – these next three games are going to matter because they still want to win the division. Like, that's – you know, they're proud of that, that they won seven straight. They want to make it eight straight. Um, so this is a big series, I think, for them. And, you know, we've seen the first couple series between these teams – um, it's getting a little, you know, the, the Padres bring energy, intensity. You know, I don't want to say chippiness, but they, there's some talking back and forth. And it seems like the Padres are really into it. And the Dodgers, you know, um, I think it was Chris Taylor last night who said, he's like, we need to match their intensity. I I got the impression from the last time they played and the board, the Padres took the first two and the Dodgers took the, the second two. The Dodgers were kind of like, yeah, see, that's what we do, right? You guys, 
you guys do your talking. That's really cool. We're, we're really impressed by what you are becoming. But, you know, we're the Dodgers, and we just beat you 11-2. to two, And that, that's the way. To, and you know what? The Padres went on, and they lost three more after that. They got swept by the Diamondbacks, had lost five in a row. I, I, I am very interested to see this series. The dynamic has changed. Um, the Padres are firing on all cylinders. They are in the top two. When you take, when you go back to that August 17th, when they started their 20 and five run, their rotation is one of the top two rotations, their bullpen, one of the top two bullpens and their offense, I think is the top offense since then. Maybe the Braves have, uh, you know, rocketed up there in the past week, but the Padres are firing on absolutely all cylinders, right? Like you honestly, you couldn't play much better than the Padres mm. have played here since the middle of August. Yeah, and this is, you know, my, my uh, radio talk show head is, are they peaking too early, you know? But, you know, the Dodgers, <laughs> you know, the Dodgers have 12 games left. And I think now is when they want to, you know, step on the gas pedal a little bit um, because they need to turn it up. They need to make sure they're ready to go for that three-game series because the three-game series doesn't matter who you're playing. The Marlins, the Giants, the Rockies, the Phillies, the Cardinals, anything can happen in a three-game series. And these guys want to be, you know, going like this. They want to be going up. They don't want to be like going like this, how they're going right now. They want to be going up because in three game series, they started last year in a five game series against a really, you know, a great, turned out to be a great Nationals team. Anything can happen in a short series. This, this series, the first round this year is even shorter. And these guys need to be sort of figuring it out and going on up, getting, getting Justin Turner back healthy, Joe Kelly back healthy, uh, Walker Buehler back healthy. They need, they need to figure things out before the playoffs. Yeah, well, I look forward to seeing you down here. I mean, yeah, be there shortly. <laughs> this is, you know, you generally you guys are just starting to, you know, kind of get ready those postseason stories, kind of polishing it up. And, and I'm getting ready for a little time off before we talk about what uh, the Padres are going to do with their Rule 5 eligible guys. And it's a whole different dynamic here in September. Yeah, it's uh, – I'll give you some, I guess, some pointers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How to cover a playoff team. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, no, appreciate it, Kevin. We'll, we'll see each other this week over the next three days. And – We'll have something for you guys. Hopefully, um, after Wednesday's series finale, we'll see if the Padres, I don't know, by Wednesday night, the, pa the Padres might be in first place in this division and L.A. will be panicking. I don't know. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. You know, it could happen over the next three days. It'll be fun to see. No fans, but the intensity will be there. It'll be as, about as electric as, a, as an empty stadium can get. So um, we'll have a lot of fun watching it and covering it for you guys. And thank you for watching. Uh, for Kevin Acey, I'm Jorge Castillo. Thank you.